Hi again. As you can see, I have not decided yet on where my lines are going to be amongst these things, but we're getting into the evening, and I'm quite tired, and I'm a coward. And being a coward, I believe I've said before, if you're unsure about certain things on your painting, work in areas where you are sure. So what I have decided about my sky is that although although there will be fluctuations in color, uh, you know, in value uh, throughout the sky, I'm going to lay down sort of a mid-value gray, bluish gray, keeping it cool. Um, and so what I have is cobalt blue, ultramarine, no, cobalt blue, raw umber, and a bit of white. So, what is this, number four probably? Yeah, it's a four. A number four flat brush, and I know it's just a wash-in, but it's still really important with my technique to try to be quite fussy. You don't have to get crazy about it, but you want to be fairly fussy about how you lay your colors in. And, you know, I know I'm painting a negative space, but even so, I'm trying, if, if I see a, a spot or a line uh, on my painting that I can improve on, even though it's the wash-in, I will do it every time you touch that canvas. If you can, make it slightly better. And, yep, yeah, that's what I'm shooting for. So, I thought I'd cover some ground tonight. And maybe sharpen up some of these lines. Maybe make them more interesting. So I'm going to go around my whole, both of my trees like this as well as uh, the horizon. Um, as you can see, I've painted this in now, cobalt blue, burnt sienna, and a bit of white. And it's thinned off enough that you can see, you know, it's, it's translucent a little bit. It's not just a thin wash. So you can kind of look through it. Yep, just like crayons in kindergarten. There's always going to be somebody who says, See, I stayed in the lines and you didn't. So, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of staying in the lines-ish. But you're, while you're doing that, you're also making your own lines. Okay, so you get the point there. I'm using a number four there. I don't need to do this all on video. I think that might bore you to death. I don't want to be accused of, nor guilty of, of uh, artistic homicide. So I'll just... What are we switching up to? Again, it's a brush. No, I can still use yeah. it. It's getting a bit worn, but it's still good. This is number eight. And then I'm just going to go in and cover it. This canvas, again, you know, it's kind of like the last 16 by 20 inch canvas that I was working on. It's a little toothier than I like. It's not terrible, though. You know, I can, I can work with it. Kind of cross hatching all over the place. Um, for some reason, see, I have this particular value right now, and because I have this rock doing this, I 
generally tend to have my sky oppose it. Even though the design may not be very strong, it, it, it will help to balance things out a little bit. I hope I'm not being too fuzzy on that explanation. I think you know what I'm talking about, though. Ooh, I have this little hole here, too. I want to fill that hole. And this one. So see what I mean? I think that uh, a couple of videos ago uh, where I did the small red shed on the shore of a lake, the lines of the fog bank behind it, uh, you know, you had the cabin sitting up there and then, and, then the, and then the ground sort of dropped away from it a little bit and the foreground was, was in this kind of manner which helped to support the, the main subject. But then to, to balance that off, I wanted to kind of bring this effect into the sky a little bit. And I think that works uh, uh, most of the time. You know, that may sound formulaic, but once uh, a certain practice that is deemed successful uh, is used, by definition, it is formulaic. There's nothing wrong with that. It works. Now, you know, it's good to challenge that sometimes. But, as with anything, once you find something that works, there's nothing wrong with using it. Some people would call it a formula for success. Now, if you always restrict yourself with formulas, your paintings will become very safe, very boring. You know, your own personality, your own flair won't come through. You want to break those rules and guides a little bit, but they are an aid, not a rule, but an aid to, um, to help the artist feel more comfortable. Certainly, uh, um, a novice artist feel more comfortable with their own composition. So that's kind of why I suggest it. That's why I often use it as well. Talk to you in a bit. So I have most of my, or most of the sky washed in now. And I'm realizing I need to talk louder. Sometimes I can mumble. I'll try not to do too much of that. Okay, we have another two spires here. Came across that on my last painting too. And I think what we'll do is just... I think we will make this one a little shorter. And not quite as spirey. There, it can look like it can look like two trees together. How's that? Trying to avoid having all these little shapes look too similar this thing is kind of a goofy looking thing right now and I know you don't see it so well on camera but I actually 
decided to bend it back this way. As a result of that, I wasn't able to remove the darker stain here, so it kind of looks skinny at the bottom. That's why it looks strange. I'm toying with the idea of making it even thicker and shorter. I'm going to leave it for the time being. I'm really not worried about it. I, I kind of like the idea of something being there, but uh, as I say, it's not something I'm going to lose. Uh, it's not something I'm going to lose sleep over. So I'm just going to mix up a little more of the same stuff here that I've been working on, and uh, it's a little lighter and a little grayer. That's uh, okay with me. I'm going to cut into that. Establish that little hole there. Go up along this edge. Actually, did I remember to hit record? Yes, I did. Sorry, I don't mean to sound so forgetful and old. It just happens with age. With age. Age, age, age. Nobody's best friend, but oh well. And yeah, you know, I just, I love cutting into these branches. It's the part of the painting, I know it's only the wash-in right now, but it's still, it's just kind of fun, because it seems to make such a difference. Getting rid of that white, you know? I love it. Yes, is uh, one of my subscribers, David Mercer. He's he suggested that I that I bring my uh, my palette higher, or have a table off to the side with a palette on it. And I agree, but given what I do for a living, I get so little exercise. A little bending over is okay. I do have a lot of back issues, so uh, that's why in a lot of my videos you'll see me just sitting down in front of my palette. But I, for the sake of the painting, I do prefer to stand. Standing up, you just breathe better and just all around operate better. More better, more gooder. See that? See how that just... It's kind of funny. It's, it's sort of a chore. It's sort of just labor, but it's some of the most rewarding labor in a painting, I think. Okay, just a little more, just a little more. I'm just going to keep boring you for a minute here. Now, I don't tend to drag a brush down onto the existing, uh, the areas that I've already got paint down because you can't get a clean line. If I do, you know, if I lay a, a stroke down like this, it feathers off overlapping this line. I want, if I want a line to stay crisp, I'll use the tip of the brush and go up and away from it. And as I say that, of course, look at that. I just dumped some on there. Thank goodness for sweatpants. Sweatpants are allocated for painting only.
or allocated to painting rather. Okay, so aside from this goofy looking thing, which I have a plan for that, no worries there, uh, or I have a couple of alternate plans, I quite like that because now I know that I have this area, I know the sky is not the most important part. Um, it's going to be another one of those paintings where really this is my subject matter, but in order to increase the drama on part of my subject matter, I can juxtapose, I hate that word, some intensity in this area, uh, you know, just adjacent to this and adjacent to these rocks. So I've left it a, a bit of a blank slate, something I can play with. Talk to you soon. So kind of on to the next stage here. Um, I'm still unsure about my lines in here, so I'm just leaving that. These rocks are very important, and I'm not going to try to think about the whole band of rock right now. I'm just going to take it apart one piece at a time. I know that I want this cleft in here. I want there to be some shadow. I don't know quite the design of this side. Uh, or what's going to be contained therein, but I do know that I'm happy with just this chunk right here. So, uh, you know, again, that, that may just, it may change. It's, it's entirely possible as the painting goes on. But I'm going to set these lines in place. Once they're there, I won't even think about them. I won't concern myself at all with them. Sort of the first stage of just knowing where I knowing where I want that stuff laying. Now I'm going to scratch in some more here with charcoal design, work myself uh, over to the left. So it's beginning to look a little bit more confusing again, I guess. Um, I have sort of this spider web grid on this rock. I wanted to First the rock was going to be fairly flat, curving down, and then I thought, well, actually I'd like this corner to, to bend away from us. Then I thought, well, what if I made this into a plane and this into a plane? So that cuts underneath. I did that by using these lines. That helps to index the surface, to, to remind myself that I want that to be a flat area. Those lines will disappear. They're not going to show us cracks in the rock. It would look a bit unnatural. But what I'm going to do right now, and it's not going to show up, the color is probably not going to show up on camera, but I've taken um, raw umber and a bit of ultramarine blue, and I'm going to just, again, to keep things simple, I'm going to paint in with that combination what I will end up, or what will end up being the darkest areas of shadow. Because without me doing that, you might think, you know, what I had here as a rock sitting in front of this of this uh, shelf, but it's not. It's actually undercut. So if I if I do those things, drop myself those little hints and reminders as I go, then when, when I'm actually painting in the painting, I won't forget so easily. Just dropping little hints and aids for myself here and there. 
that's it. That's that, that cleft in the rock. There's another cut there. Okay, back to doing a few more lines. <laughs> well, that came out kind of wrong. So I did some filming last night. I don't know how long this video is going to end up being, but I'll close out by showing you this. So my rocks are all in place. I know this stone ends up looking a little more like quarried stone. This one looks a little more like water-worn stone. That's fine. Those are things you change. Uh, change the nature of it when I, when I do my final painting. Um, but the important thing is that there's variety. That we don't have a whole bunch of potatoes stacked on top of each other. That's the difficult thing. So rather than just painting stones or rocks, you're trying to paint strata. There's a design to, to, to all kinds of rock. It's, no matter how it's laid out. Um, this is something I really enjoyed about living on, on the west coast. I used to live on one of the Gulf Islands and uh, I just love to go around on my boat and, and take photos and do sketches of yeah, just some amazing, amazing uh, shoreline. So there it is. I this this area here was what have I used? Pretty much for all, for all of this, I've used a lot of raw umber, a bit of ultramarine blue, um, and then gone in with a little yellow ochre in you know areas like here in this. Um, more yellow ochre and a lizard and crimson actually as well in this area. So it's a good variety there. I like it. I'm going to I'm going to wash in the water so that all that's left is to work on the design of these trees. I've avoided the brain work of, <laughs> of designing them. It's a problem I'm going to have to face pretty soon. But that's how it sits right now. I'll uh We'll get back to you, I guess, tomorrow. Have a good one.